Update 1 on Tropical Storm Kalmagi, which has formed in the Western Pacific with winds now of 50 miles per hour and a pressure of 989 millibars. Its current position is 13.8 degrees north, 129.7 degrees east, as of 2 p.m. UTC on September 12th. The storm is expected to become a typhoon before striking the Philippine island of Luzon before moving on to the South China Sea, where it could intensify perhaps a little bit more, perhaps reaching Category 2 typhoon strength. Um, before approaching the southern coast of China and uh, Hainan Island as well before moving on to Vietnam uh, and possibly a passage through the Gulf of Tonkin. But the immediate threat remains with the Philippines and that will be the case for the next 48 hours or perhaps a little more than that. The eastern coast um, of the northern part of the country will be um, experiencing storm conditions over the next few days. Warnings in effect for the island of Catanduans already. Signal 1 warnings currently in effect there and we are expecting to see those warnings extend westwards, possibly affecting the Metro Manila area, but that remains to be seen at this time. Uh, but certainly the eastern side of the island of Luzon will see storm conditions, most of it at least, uh, from Catanduans northwards. Uh, so we could possibly see typhoon conditions as well towards the central part of the island. Uh, we'll see how that goes in the next update. Sea surface temperatures remain fairly warm, around 30 degrees Celsius or so, uh, which is certainly prime conditions for development, at least as far as sea surface temperatures are concerned, and that's not likely to wane very much as the storm moves towards the west-northwest. Uh, wind shear is another matter, pretty much. Uh, the southern part of the South China Sea has very high amounts, but where the storm is in particular, uh, low to moderate amounts, uh, which should mean gradual intensification is on the cards. As far as water vapour is concerned, there's a hell of a lot of that around, so that's not going to be an issue in terms of dry air entrainment, which could potentially weaken the storm. The computer models, the CMC first of all, uh, predicts a bit of a northward jog by the looks of things and that would mean the storm would graze the northernmost part of the Philippines before moving on to the South China Sea and then what looks like a landfall just about on the northern tip of Hainan Island in China and then the northern Vietnam. And the GFS model uh, has a more central route through the Philippines uh, moving over the mountainous part of Luzon and then moving on through the South China Sea possibly affecting uh, China as a significant typhoon and another weak storm following it as well in its footsteps. Uh, this is another view of the uh, GFS model. Um, over the next few days you can see how the storm is expected to intensify and what appears to be um, the eastern side of the storm will be the strongest possibly gusting to category 2 intensity as it makes landfall in the Philippines but we'll see how that goes in the next few days of course. Rapid strengthening is always a possibility when it comes to the western Pacific. Looking at the latest satellite imagery, you can see how the storm's been developing in the past few hours. Um, it's gone up from 40 miles per hour to 50 in the past six hours, um, and the storm's gradually moving towards the west. Still a due west heading at the moment, really. Uh, not much of a northwest element yet, but we're expecting to see that in the next few hours, um, certainly in the next day. Uh, so you can see a few um, showers associated with the storm moving over the Philippine Islands right now, the um, northern and central part of the country, uh, seeing a few rain bands and thunderstorms coming through, uh, but the main part of the storm is still well offshore. Wind speeds will probably not be gusting to tropical storm strength just yet, uh, but that will change over the next few hours and days. Looking around the world, the tropics have livened up in the past few days. Uh, three tropical storms, Odile, Edward, and of course, Kalmagi, uh, and also Tropical Depression 16E in the Eastern Pacific, and 2 Invest 92L, which could develop in the Atlantic, and 95W, which is uh, pretty much dissipated. Uh, 56 tropical storms had formed so far around the world in 2014. 27 of those have become Category 1 uh, hurricane equivalent cyclones with winds of 74 miles per hour and higher. 16 of those becoming Category 3 storms, just 3 of 2010, um, which is the next lowest in the 26 year record that we display here. Um, and of course, just 22 of the 78 that, 20, that 2010 had 
uh, as far as storms are concerned. You can visit Force 13 on any of its six outlets. The website, force13.com, will keep you most up to date with all the goings on around the world, tropics wise. There haven't been many updates recently due to other commitments, but that will change again um, now on. Uh, of course, the video channels, YouTube and Daily Motion, just search Force 13 on there for the latest video updates. And of course, the social pages, Facebook and Twitter, search Force 13 on those, at Force 13 on Twitter if you'd like to get in touch. And you can speak to me personally on Skype, at Full 13 on there for tropical weather chat. Um, you can also visit the control room on the website, Western Pacific version, coming soon. At the moment, it's only open to the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific. That's all for now. The next update on this storm will follow in 12 hours if necessary.